Hey and welcome to this new Blender tutorial. In this one we're going to make a Christmas tree out of glass. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So first thing that we're going to do is delete everything in the scene, since we're not going to need any of it. Next up we're going to add in a cylinder, which we do by hitting Shift A, Mesh and then looking for the cylinder. Then by pressing S and Shift Z we're going to scale the cylinder so that it's rather thin, like this. So, next up, let's get straight into it. I press number pad 1 to get into front, perspective, uh, front of the graphic perspective view. And now I'm just going to press Shift R in edit mode by pressing tab and then Shift R. Uh, give me a second. And scrolling up until I get 34 cuts. So, next up, I'm going to go into face selection view or mode which is up here on the left. I'm going to press on this little icon here, which allows me to see through the mesh, and I'm just going to quickly select. So I'm just going to left click and shift and drag along this here. So I'm just holding shift and left clicking and dragging over here. And I'm selecting basically every second row of faces here. So why am, are we doing this in the uh, wireframe view, that is because the faces on the back side of the model will be selected this way as well, which is what we want. So once we did that, and we realized that we selected the wrong thing, so I'm going to press uh, Ctrl I to invert the selection, just simply deselect this here, and that. I'm just gonna go ahead and press Alt E and uh, extrude faces along normals. I'm just going to extrude it, make it about this wide. We don't have to be exact, you can do whatever you want. So this is about fine. Um, so yeah, next up what we're going to do is, first I'm going to check if everything on the top is selected. Nope, doesn't seem like it. So in front of the graphic view, what we're going to do is select and deselect this again, also, or deselect and select this again, so we have a white dot on the top. And press F3 and go look for checker deselect. Just gonna hit, uh, just gonna hit it, and let's do the same thing here. Just press Shift R once you selected and deselected it, just like that. Just do it for all of the rows, which might take a little of a little time, but it's not that big of an issue. It's going to be done rather quickly. Okay, so once you did that, you can basically just uh, bring it down until it almost touches. So the orange one should almost touch the black one. So you get this weird pattern here. So why is that? Once we press Control and number uh, two, not on the number pad, but on above the letters in your keyboard, you will see we get this swirly pattern. You press W and shade smooth and you should be able to see what is happening here. So next up, what I'm going to do is, I'm just quickly going to get this here, the bottom part. I'm gonna ex extrude it down a little bit and inset it twice by pressing E and I. So extrude for, uh, E for extrude and I for inset. This here I'm going to scale with S to be a little bit pointy and then inset it twice again. And you should be having something that looks like a connected pasta. So that is not the final look that we're craving. So since that is not it, we're going to add, go to the modifiers, which is the blue wrench here. Add modifier, simple deform, and this is about how a Christmas tree looks. And uh, it should be fine by it now, but we can further adjust it uh, if it's not what you, uh, what you like to put in your living room by just going to taper. Uh, now this year looks a lot more like a Christmas tree. Uh, I think everybody has had one of those. Uh, they usually look like look like this when I order them, but no. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to put it a little bit less of an intensity, and just hit the Z axis constraint. And now this is like an inverse tree. So what we're going to do is get it into the negative direction, something like this. So I'm going to put it up so it's roughly looking like this. And now I'm just going to scale this along the Z axis and apply the scale. So since that is not really uh, to my liking, what we 
we can do is um, we can simply go into edit mode again, alt and shift click on these fellas here until all of them are selected. Whoops, not like that. Oops. Uh, re-enable the subdivision surface and the tapering and now just press G and Z and move them down until it looks like the, uh, it looks the way they're like about like this now we can see it looks really really nice but not done yet Let's select those here I'm just selecting the middle part and then pressing con uh, control and plus on the number pad a few times and then I'm just bringing this down here so we get a nice stem uh, which is a little too thick for me, so I'm just going to scale it in a little bit, something like this. And look at this, it's a Christmas tree. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, set the origin point to be here, so I'm just selecting the face, shift S, uh, cursor to select it, and now I'm exiting the edit mode, F3, and uh, origin 2, 3D cursor might give you this weird result here we're just pressing con uh, alt and g to bring it to the middle of the uh, of the world and now we can just adjust the taper to be the way we had it before um, just going to make it a little wider something like this scale yep that looks nice maybe i can further adjust this yep like this so now what we're going to do is give this a plane so i'm just going to press shift s again cursor to world origin which brings it right there shift a plane bring it up and that is looking rather nice so now i'm going to add in an hdri which you can get off the internet uh, popular site is hdri haven which gives you free hdri so just click on the yellow dot here environment texture open and then you direct it to the folder which you have saved them to. I'm going to just take this one here, add in a camera. Once I find it here, just bring it up, bring it on the ground here, rotate it accordingly, and bring it a little bit further away. Something like that. Just going to press uh, Ctrl and B. Draw a border around here, so I'm just only rendering this part once we get into cycles because getting into cycles is really important since it's going to look the best. So I'm just going to render it. Yep, something like that. Now I'm just uh, pressing A, R, and rotating it until I'm getting this nice view around here, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I'm going to select the camera up here and enable depth of field, select the cylinder or the Christmas tree as our subject and now we can just scale everything in until the tree here is about 10 centimeters let's say. Scale, 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 scale until it's at point 0.1 or point 0.15 or point 0.2 something like that. Apply the scale for everything and look at that, we get some nice depth of field just scaling the object which is really really nice so I'm just going to use denoising for the render and the viewport as well starting at 15 samples so it's not completely uh, completely weirded out and yeah so this is looking rather nice giving this a material just a standard material making it a black plane something like this giving it 0.25 of roughness and we're getting a nice result there. Now for this here, I'm just going to give it a standard glass material. Uh, just going to a new material and press G here to give it a glass material. Make sure that this here is set to completely white and the roughness should be at 0.01 to give it a nice glass texture. But now, if you take a look uh, at the glass, It is really dark, it doesn't really look like the render I've showed you in, be in the beginning. Uh, some parts do, like this here in the middle and some parts over here and the stem, but this here is just all really 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 dark. 
And why is that? That is because the default Blender, um, the default Blender settings for rendering, are not really optimized for rendering glass. So after some reflections, you get this dark part here, uh, which doesn't really give any information about the reflection and the refraction of the objects around it. So what you're getting is some nice things happening over here, getting potentially even worse uh, and worse towards the bottom where the glass is a little bit thicker because there is a lot of internal refraction and reflection um, since the glass, is, uh, since the light is passing in, being reflected a bunch of times and then getting out. Here it's at the stage where it doesn't even get out and that's why it's black. So in order to fix that, there is an easy, uh, an easy but yet uh, a little bit cost effect, uh, cost uneffective um, setting that we can tweak. And that is the total bounces, which I'm going to set to 32, which doesn't change anything yet. But once we get the glossy, you might think it's a transparency, but no, it's actually mostly the, uh, the glossy, because as I said, it's the reflections which are causing this. Once you set that to 32 as well, look at this, the blackness is completely gone. It's, uh, it's starting to shimmer through and there is no black parts, everything is being rendered correctly. You can see the light passing through perfectly and once we get to a stage where it renders up to 15 samples, it's going to denoise and you're going to see that it's looking absolutely beautiful. Just give me a second. Yep, so once denoised you can see that it's looking absolutely beautiful and pretty and that is really the way we want it to look. So, um, now in the beginning I've shown you uh, most likely some examples of colored glass, um, which is really really easy to achieve. Um, by the way, you can do this in Eevee, but as I said, it's not going to look nearly as pretty, so I would really suggest that you use cycles. Um, but if you're doing it in Eevee, I would suggest you just color the glass directly, but if you're using cycles, I'm going to show you another nice, uh, nice trick which I've used in this tutorial here for making glass um, and it's actually really really nice. I would suggest uh, if you don't know much about making glass, glass materials and something like that, I would suggest you just check it out and there you can also learn something nice. Um, so we're get, uh, getting ourselves a volume absorption node and that is most likely uh, or most often uh, used for coloring glass or liquids or anything that has a transposum a property. So once we plug it in, there's nothing really happening. But let's just say I want a blue Christmas tree, a light blue Christmas tree, like this. I'm just going to set the, uh, the value to 1, the saturation to 1, and the hue uh, is adjustable. So once we do that, you can't really really see much. But wait until I turn the intensity up to like 25. Doesn't that look really nice? I mean, it's a light blue Christmas tree. Uh, out of glass. It's looking it's looking really really nice I think and um, we can get nice results uh, using this and I think this looks absolutely pretty. You can also make it red like in the example over here or green and uh, really how much color you get with this is depending on the, on the thickness of the glass. So since we're looking at a lot of glass over here um, you can see that it's really getting uh, dark and really uh, really really vibrant and once you get to the peak here, where it's actually a lot thinner, the glass, you can see that it's actually more whitish, which gives this a really nice colored glass illusion, and I would suggest that you use this all of the time for coloring your glasses. Um, as I said, it doesn't only work with blue, it works with green, it works with red, it works with yellow, which it also gives you a really nice uh, and really cool effect. And as I said, the thicker the glass, the more you're getting out of this. Uh, this looks actually like a Christmas tree made out of honey. But yeah, you can get a lot of really nice and really cool effects using this technique. And uh, I hope you like this. Um, I hope to see a lot from you. You can uh, join my Discord server and send all your cute little Christmas trees out of glass in there. And I would be really proud to see what you made using my tutorials. So, without any further to do, I wish you all a great uh, evening or night or day, whatever it is at, your, uh, at the time that you're looking at this. And yeah, Merry Christmas. See ya. Bye.